Bismillah. Uh, good uh, afternoon, everybody. So we're in uh, week 14, we are today in the class one. So today, inshallah, we are going to uh, start a new, a new section of of the BJD. I think we uh, we covered the, the last sections, huh? Which one? The, this one. Let's see. Did we cover this uh, before? Uh, no, not now. Oh, uh, we did, huh? Yes. Okay. Nonetheless, nonetheless, I will start from today here. Just you know, and helping you to uh, try to link things. And by the way, I just uh, uploaded the new version. Some uh, mistakes I have uh, corrected and stuff. So you can find it in the blackboard. So we started with this. We said that you know the, sa the saturation mode for the BJT. It starts when VCD huh, goes down up to minus 0.4. Huh? We said that even at minus 0.4, the diode, the collector base, huh, the collector base. Let me uh, let me remind you, just in case, huh, the collector base. So we are talking again about MPN, huh? yes. okay? So the collector base, which is this one, huh? MPN. So uh, okay. So this is the emitter, if you want, the base and the collector. Huh? So this junction, huh? we said that this junction needs to be forward biased in the active mode, in the, uh, the saturation. saturation. So the active, we need this junction, the emitter base forward, and this one reverse. But we said that, okay, which is, in, which is this case, okay? And in this case, the collector current is independent of the VCD means the voltage in here, because that current that we collect here came from here. So it doesn't depend on this voltage. Boom. But we said that even when this junction is forward biased, but it's not forward biased enough to make conduction, and it cannot pass the current. Meaning like what? Like the VCB is negative. VCB negative, that means what? That means this voltage is less than this voltage. This makes forward here, okay? But it's not forward enough to make a current. It's forward to make a current, up to here, minus 0.4, okay? When VCB goes below that, then this one really is forward biased and will conduct the current, okay? Good. And we explained also that the current, the collector current, now not only will depend on VCB, but it will go down. Why? Because the current, the collector current, increased, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, the collector current Decreased why? Because the base now is generating a current here, huh? and that generation of current, because this is constant, will make this current, the collector current, goes down. Because if this increases, this has to decrease because the sum here is constant. Okay, and that's why it goes really fast. Why? Because this addition of current here exponential, so it increases very quickly with VBC, huh? the voltage between the base and the collector. Excellent. That's why the the going down here of the collector current goes really fast, exponential in fact. Okay, good. And we said that, of course, because the base collector now is forward, so we have this current, the initial current uh, of the BJT, IV, between the base and the emitter. Now we have to add to that current, the current from the base to the collector. Uh, and this makes basically the beta, which is the ratio between IC and the IB, less than Beta, the original beta, actually, because here we found that IC increases, yes or no? Because originally this is the value, yes or no? So because, of, oh sorry, it decreased, huh? okay, let's go down, sorry, sorry about that. So we said that IC actually decreased because of this, huh? because of this, the IC, the collector current, decreased. And IB originally was equal to this, now it has increased by this. So IB huh, increased, very good. Now, if I make the ratio between IC and IB, why? Because originally, what do I have? Originally, we said that beta huh, is equal to what? Is equal to IC over IB. Yes or no? Yes. Very good. That means that IC is equal to IB beta. So, if IC decreases and IB uh, increases, it makes this ratio what? Goes down. Because this is less and this is high. Mm -hmm. So, it has to go down. And because of that, now beta will become less than the original beta. Pay attention to this. Huh? This is serious now. Beta that we had originally in the active mode, in the active mode, that beta is independent of currents. 
It's a characteristic of the BGD, uh, of the fabrication of the BGD. It does not depend on any current whatsoever. It's a constant and it's a number that nobody will talk about it. Okay? It comes in the data sheet of the BGD. Very good. Now, this beta, however, it depends on the currents, you see. Now, it depends where IC and IB are. If now it continues to uh, decrease, and this one continues to increase, so the whole thing will continue to decrease. So it depends on these currents. So this beta, we call it beta forced. Why? Because it's forced by this current. It is function, actually, of this current. Okay? So it is function of IC and also of IB. Huh? You see? So because of that, so beta is beta forced by what? By the currents. So it's not anymore a uh, characteristic of DBG. Very good. Excellent. This is very important, very useful, and you will see why. This is the same thing that we have speak of, spoken by. Now, good. So we said that. This is also, this is the uh, change. So now to determine the saturation region, we have two possibilities. Either the, what's this? Collector base junction. Yeah. Either the collector base junction is forced by, by more than 0.4 volt. Because this, this is the other. So the other junction here, as you can see here, I mean the elect emitter base junction is always the forward biased. We don't talk about that. We are only interested on this, huh? on the collector base junction. The other one is forward. If it's reverse, we are not, uh, huh? we are not uh, talking. Okay? So assuming this already, so the collector base, if it is forward biased by more than 0.4, it means VCB is less than minus 0.4. See, the collector base is forward bias. That means what? Let's see. Okay, this is the base the emitter and the collector. This is P uh, and PN. Uh. So forward bias. That means this voltage is bigger than this one. That means VBC it has to be positive. It means VCB is negative, and it has to be more than this negative. Do you understand? Clear? So in this case, the junction is not only forward but is conductive. Uh. Good? So either this or, what is that? What is that? Or, huh? this you put three lines. Why? Because if I know this, this is enough. If I know this, this is enough. So if I calculate IC over IB and they found it less than beta of this BGT, that means I'm not in the active mode. We are in the Saturation. boom. That's it. And in that case, this will be beta forced. Good? Clear? Very good. If you need me to repeat, we repeat. Huh? Now we, after half an hour, huh? lots of talk, now we come to another BGT, which is the PNP. So remember what uh, we did in MOSFET? We said that the only thing to understand the PMOS is to make and flip everything in NMOS, the currents, huh? and everything. The same thing in here. So instead of uh, uh, NPN, we have PNP here. So the currents, the major current in NPN was what? Was electrons, yes or no? Because originally in NPN we have, you see, N, P, N. Okay, this is the emitter. Uh, let's see. What is that? This is the emitter, and this is the base, and this is the collector, remember? Mm -hmm. So the emitter was emitting what? Was emitting the electrons, yes or no? Yes. So the major current then was the electrons, yes or no? Yes. They go there, and then they go get collected there. So the current is basically electrons. Now, it's the opposite. What? Holes. Now, because we have P and D, now the emitter will inject what? what? We inject holes. That's right. And the minority or the little current that will come back electrons. will be electrons. So it's... And now, that current, because this is, of course, this has to be forward bias, and this has to be reverse. Now, that, those holes will be collected by the collector, okay? And then, boom! So you see, in the NPN, the current was actually going out of the emitter, yes or no? Yes. And coming into the collector, yes or no? no. Remember? Yes. Huh? yes or no? Yes. And the holes were coming, or the positive current also was coming into the base. Now, everything opposite. Now how it comes? Now the emitter will receive the, uh, the current, and the base will lose the current, and the collector will collect the remaining of the currents. Okay? 
Now it makes sense why we call this is collector and that emitter and that's the base. Because the collector collects the current, the emitter emit the current, but it's the, emit, the conventional current, not of that electrons. Okay? See now? So the story becomes what? It becomes somehow complete. Okay? And the same equations, but we have to flip now. We'll see that in the next, in the next model. Now, in the equations, now in the models of the PNP, what we have, so now, again, we have this forward bias, the emitter base, okay, always like that, that the current will come into it, and the current will be generated there at the terminal of the collector, and is equal now, I asked VEB, you see? It was VBE initially, yes or no? But now it's VEB. Why? Because the emitter has to be bigger than base. Yes or no? Yes. PNP. Yes or no? See? Flip. When you flip, everything becomes what? Makes sense. And now the, the current now becomes also sense here. Now the model becomes like this, okay? So the current will come from the emitter and get some of it will go through the base and the other one will go to the collector and the equation for the current that comes out of the collector is nothing but IS VEB over VT. That's it. Okay. Doctor, in each mode it will be the same for the P and P. Uh, repeat that again. In each mode it will be the same. What mode? For the P and P. Uh, same in terms of uh, concept. For example, when you say the emitter base junction has to be forward, it's forward. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be forward, it has to be the emitter bigger than the base. Do you understand? It's not N P N R ah, fifty. Do you understand? So in concept, yes, they will be the same. So forward. Reverse, active. Forward, forward. Saturation. Saturation. Reverse, reverse. Cut off. Boom. Cut off. That's it. That's what it is. So it's, uh, it's the same, basically. But the voltages and currents, they will not be the same. Polarity change. Huh? Okay. Polarity what? Changes. Okay. Good. Any question? Ask questions. Ask. Don't stop from asking questions. It's okay. Now we come to the symbols, the fun stuff. Now the symbols, because we have to put the BGT in the circuit, so we have to have what? A symbol. symbol. Very good. What reminds you of this symbol? Looks like what? MOSFET. Which one? Uh, and MOSFET. Uh, MOSFET. MOS. How does it look like? Because... Uh, the arrows goes into the source. Ah, very good. So continue. So this in NMOS is a source. Yes or no? <laughs> Excellent. And this? Drain. 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 And then this? Gate. And actually the symbol for that MOS is like this. Remember? Yeah. Boom. So you see the symbol? It's very similar. Yes or no? It's just we, we made a difference here. Huh? See, instead of uh, horizontal knobs, that's it. Very good, excellent. That's why the BGT is very similar to the NMOS. Uh, to the MOS. Huh? And this one, the symbol looks for what? Yes. So this one now, we know what it is. N so it's NMOS. Huh? And this one looks like what? Yes. Yes. And you know, this one will become what? Uh, the source. Uh, you see, again, see, emitter source, yes or no? Very good. And then comes here, and then so boom, a row, yes or no? And then boom, and then here, the 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 see? See how similar is this? G. And then gate. Gate. See similarities? See similarities? Even the direction of the current is very similar. The only difference basically is the two things. Is the gate here is isolated in the MOSFET. There's no current comes in. But for BGT there's current. IB. Yes or no? which is IC over beta. But for MOSFET, no, there is no current. This is one, number one. And number two, the current at the uh, collector is actually IS EVBE. You see? It's exponentially huh? proportional to VBE. Yes or no? But for the, the other one, no. Yes or no? See? See how? More linear. Very good. Excellent. Plus one last one, we did that. GM also this one. We will see that later on. We saw that for BJT was actually almost 10, 20 times, yes or no? Very high. Ah, compared to the MOSFET. Huh? 
this comparison is very important. It shows, we'll see also some comparison later on as well. Okay, good. Now, in the circuit way, this is how we bias the circuit. So this is what, what transistor is this? Um, and what? And PN, and yes, yes. How did you know that? Because the current is emitted. Out of? Yeah, continue. Wait. Because the collector is in the top and the arrow of the collection. Exactly. All of the arrow is always near the emitter. This is the one, one thing. This says only the emitter. But it doesn't say here it's MPN or PNP. Only when the current is out of the emitter, out of the emitter, then it becomes MPN. Okay? But if it is into the emitter, PN. Okay? Got it? Good. As you can see, this junction is what? So we said already that this is what? So N, P, N, R. So P, let's write a nice P here. Alright? So you can see that this junction is forward biased. Yes or no? This junction. It's forward biased or no? Is this junction forward biased or no? Yes. 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 Oh. P to the positive yes. and to the negative. And this junction, is it reverse or no? Yes. Because N is connected to P. Huh? And the P of the base is connected to negative. Yes or no? Good. Same thing in here. Okay. Same thing in here. You can see that this junction, V V B, uh, is always forward biased. You can see this, the uh, because here what we have here we have P N P. Okay. Okay. That's it. Somebody will tell me. Listen, doctor. This is negative here, positive. How did you say this is uh, reverse or forward? Sahu Alela. This is negative here, sir, and this is positive. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Why don't ask me this? Because, because it's connected to the But hold on, this terminal is negative and positive. Mm -hmm. So when I talk for about this one, why I said this is uh, reverse, although I can say this terminal is also connected to this? Because the 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 this is number one. And also what we care here is the difference of the voltage of this one compared to the voltage of this one. So here, this voltage is the same here and there. This is becomes the reference. Do you understand? This voltage in here is the same for this pole and this pole. This and this, they have the same voltage here. Okay, that's it. But what is really important is the reference with respect to that. Which one is bigger? This voltage or this reference is actually this one. Do you understand? All right. These are the basic of electrical engineering, okay? That's what you need to have all the time. Not to memorize questions and numbers. Okay, good. Boom. Now, these equations are the equations that we use for the BGT. Which BGT, by the way? Bipolar. Which one? Yeah, bipolar. We are talking about BGT. NPN or PNP? PNP. NPN. Bella, just a second. Who said NPN? There is your hand. NPN. Who said PNP? You know the next comment, right? What about the others? La ilaha ula, wa la ilaha ula, huh? What? Is MOSFET then? Is MOSFET? Or maybe a resistor? Because I see. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Go ahead. Yeah? Because VBE. Very good, very good. That's the point. You see, VBE. The collector is proportional to. E to VDE, and when we use this, in NPN. Exactly, in NPN. Okay, that's because where? Because uh, uh, what you say? The emitter here, the base, and the collector. the collector. We said that the emitter and base they have to be uh, forward. forward. Very good. That means V B E V B minus V E has to be positive, mm -hmm. and the exponentials have positive. So this must be only NPN. If it was PNP, it will be VE. -E. Exactly. That's why I have hidden this. So, oh, for PNP? No, it's NPN. That was me. VBE. No. Ah, no, no, no. He said for PNP, uh, replace VBE with VE. -E. Yes. Exactly. It's the end of the day on time. Yes, you understand? Like, like she said. So this is for NPN. If it was for 
P and B, like it says here, you have to replace VBE with VEB. Because things are flipped. Okay? Doctor? Yes? And the problem, uh, he will not tell me if this is P and B or... Don't even it. think about it. Don't even think about it. I will not put that. You have to know which transistor is this. And what equation you use for what transistor. That's why I told you, this course is of understanding, it's not of memorization, and not of free lunch or free grades. You have to prepare, you have to understand. And it's your time now to ask questions and understand. Uh, do you understand? Okay? If you have a question, you ask. That's fine. Alright? Good. Any question? Good. We move on. Good. And there are all the questions we have already spoken about. It's not uh, really the time for, for reading them again. Okay. We said that the collector base junction is actually a reverse bias in the active. Back to the active mode, huh? Oh, sorry. In the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the active, sorry. In the active mode, the collector base is what? Is reverse biased. Reverse. In the reverse bias, what's the current of that junction alone? By the way, ICDO, that means the emitter is open. That means like what? It's like this, basically. It's basically we have a junction. Oh, let me... Uh, let me delete this guy because it's, it has to be clean, actually, and clear, so that you know what I'm talking about here. Okay? All right. Let's see. Let me get Good. So it's the ICDO that is talking about it. There is the current of this. Follow me, yeah? This is uh, again NPN, NPN. Okay. You know, this is the the emitter, base, and the collector. Boom, boom. We said that this one has to be what? Reverse bias, yes or no? So if I connect to a battery, I will bring this to what? To the negative. negative. Uh, to the negative, exactly. And this one to the positive. Very good. So ICDO is the current that passes through this circuit with the emitter O open. So this, like it's not connected to anything. Okay? Do you understand? Why we study that? Because we want to see the impact of the current there. When uh, a junction is reverse biased, there's a current or no? Yes. And how much is that? What's the name of that current, at least? When a reverse biased junction, when a junction is reverse biased, is there a current? Of course there is. What do we call that current? I told you at the beginning oh, yes. that we are going back to the basics, yeah? Oh, yes. That we are getting, yeah, the IS, yes. that saturation current. Is it diffusion or uh, drift? Drift. No, diffusion. Drift. Uh, drift. You got there. Uh, you went back and then, shh, woo. Because I always uh, compare with that diffusion. So if, it is the, if there is a diffusion, then it means the diffusion, the, the diffusion cannot. But if there is no, no diffusion. But diffusion happens in the forward. In the forward. In the reverse, there is no diffusion. It is not no diffusion. Excellent. That's the way. I learn from your friend. That's the way. That's how you think about it. Very good. Excellent answer. That's the way. So, because it's reverse biased, it's not diffusion. It must be drift only. IS. Yes. We explained that millions of times. And that current is actually I. I of the diode. Now it's actually is equal to minus IS. What does it minus IS? That means that's current that goes opposite to the convention. The convention is that this one positive and this negative, so the current is going this way. And it's actually that's the one, because it's a battery, you see? So that current is very, very small. The resistance here is extremely high, okay? Because it is reverse biased, remember that, huh? But that current is definitely a saturation current. And we said that the saturation current is made of minority carriers, huh? And those minority carriers, they come from where? from the breaking of the bones of the silicon. Huh? Yes. So basically that current is dependent on the temperature. So if we raise the temperature, we break more bones. So we have more bones, we have more minorities. We have more minorities, we have more IS. So it increases with temperature. So in the connector, so now let's, uh, let's remember, in, uh, in the NPM, the current goes where? 
goes out of, let me use the, the green again, comes out of here into here. So the total current that goes into the connector actually is equal to the connector current that we have it plus this current that we have here due to the reverse bias junction. Okay, so we have two currents. We have this one and this one. That means it's ICDO plus IC. This is the total IC of uh, that uh, IS e v b e over V T. Okay, that's the one. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. This is IC total. This is the total current that goes into the collector. Okay, all right. So if we increase the temperature, this current now becomes more significant. In fact, it doubles every 10, 10 degrees. So if we increase the temperature by 10 degrees, that current doubled. But still, it's very small. It's actually in the nanoamps. So even if it doubles, still it's in the nanoamps. Yeah, I mean, in the worst case, it becomes microamps. Okay? So it's not really of a big deal. And the one that we uh, calculate actually is, uh, or actually in reality, when you measure it, this current is actually more more than the nanoamps actually, in reality. Okay, so, but it just we need to mention this to know about it. So in reality, actually, that current that we have here, saturation, is actually more than the values that we calculated. Now, back to one of the questions that we asked in the quiz, and also was a bonus, huh? that was answered very well by him, I think. So we said that the diode barrier, or the diode barrier, if we increase the heat of the junction, we said that the barrier decreases, yes or no? Yes. That's what it is in here. So, if you look now at the junction, what junction we are talking about? The base emitter junction. Huh? We said that the, that junction will not forward any current huh? unless that junction voltage is above a certain threshold. Now, if we increase the temperature, that threshold will go down. This is a graph to show that. So, let's say we have a temperature T3. So the junction, the threshold function, the threshold voltage is in this edge. If we increase now the temperature, as you can see, this is less than this, less than this, so this less than this. So as we increase the, the threshold for the, for the junction to start up a current, actually increases. So this is the V threshold 3, and this is for what? This is V threshold 2, and this one would be like here. V threshold 1. These threshold voltages, I think we have spoken about them, is they are actually almost equal to the barrier voltage. And that's the barrier voltage that we said it will decrease actually as we increase the temperature. If you remember the bonus question. That's exactly the question that we answered it. So this is just to show the effect of the temperature. So if we increase the temperature, two things will happen. The collector current will increase by a little bit because of ICDO current, huh? and also the junction uh, threshold voltage for VBE and, uh, will also will have to decrease. And if it does increase, uh, uh, decrease, so the current also will increase. Okay? All right? So that's what it is. Okay. So this is just to show the effect of the temperature on the performance. Now we come back to the early effect. So the early effect, we talked about it, it's a déjà vu. Ah, it's a déjà vu. Déjà vu. In French, means we have seen it already. When we talked about early effect, or early voltage? Um, in? In diodes. Nope. Early voltage, we mentioned it in different topic. And in the MOSFET. In the MOSFET, yes. Ah, okay. So that's why it's a déjà vu, because it was we discussed it in the MOSFET. Where exactly? Which parameter depends on R, on uh, on uh, the early voltage? Do you remember which one? G. No, not GM. GM, no. R not depends on the on the early voltage. How much is equal? V what? Revision finally is close. Huh? Is equal to early voltage VA over 
Lambda. 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 Because it's a resistance. صح ولا لا؟ It's a resistance. Voltage over the current. Yes or no? صح ولا لا؟ This we studied it in the in the MOSFETs. And this is very important. As actually the history of the early effect start with BGT before MOSFET actually. So the effect of early, Mr. James Early, this guy who, who found this, he was playing with the BGT and he basically looked at the graphs. These are the graphs basically at, uh, of the ICVCE at different VBE. Okay? We said that the collector should be independent of the uh, 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 the collector current should be independent of the collector voltage. The same like ID was independent of VD, making E the source in the MOSFET in the ground, in the common ground, remember? So it was horizontal, but actually, in fact, what happens is that this slopes actually increases as we increase VBE, uh, and the collector actually becomes dependent on VCE. How he found that? He basically put a ruler and then he started to make lines. He was playing games. He found that all these lines, they, they, they yes. meet at the same point. And he said, oh, why? I'll become famous. And he became famous since that time. And he named that voltage, early voltage, minus VA. But then the explanation why the collector becomes the collector current becomes, uh, becomes dependent on VCE suddenly. Hmm? To explain this fact, so originally we were expecting this. We were expecting that these lines are horizontal. They should not have any slope because the collector current should not depend on the collector voltage. Right? It depends only on VBE, but it doesn't depend on VCE. Okay? Uh, why, Mr. Early, this happens? I'm not sure about who explained that originally, but to explain it is very, very simple and very similar to the MOSFET as well. To explain that, we go back. I've told you today, we are coming back to what we studied. For those who revised, they find it fascinating and enjoying. But those who did not, and unfortunately many of you, they will find it also shaking the head. It's very uh, too much, too much on us, sir. Okay. We go back where we go back to the currents, the currents that we studied early on this chapter. Which current we are talking about? We are talking about the collector current. Okay, let me delete that this this one now. We don't need it. So the collector current is equal actually, if you remember, to I S E V B E over V T. And I S we found this formula for I S. We said that the saturation current there is actually inversely proportional to the width of the base. Yes or no? Yes. Very good. Very good. Excellent. And then, actually, before that, just before that, we have shown and discussed about the effective base width. The effective base width means the, the, the real width. Huh? Because remember, huh? the real width, the physical width, it means of the p-type and n-type. So we said this is n, uh, the whole thing. Uh, and this is what? This is the phase for the whole thing. And from here until the limit of the BGT, this is the collector. But as you can see that some part of the base is being taken by the depletion region between the emitter and the base. And some will be eaten because of the depletion region of between the collector and the base. And if you remember now, now let's go back, or let's uh, play some fun here. If we increase the collector voltage, that means we try, we make basically the voltage between the collector and the base higher and higher. What happens to the depletion? Decrease. And increase. We are reverse biasing this one. If we increase the reverse bias, means we increase, this is the reverse bias, yes or no? Mm -hmm. So we, if we increase the reverse bias, what happens to this? The depletion region, it will? Decrease. We said that if we increase the reverse bias voltage, the depletion region will increase. It will decrease only when uh, forward. Ah, I see. Don't make these mistakes. We have spoken about that and, you know, 
increases and stuff. So if we increase now the collector voltage, that means we are increasing the reverse bias voltage. And in that case, this becomes wider, yes or no? So that means the effective base actually becomes what? Shorter. Yes or no? We are, we are shrinking now the width or the effective width of, of the base. Yes or no? Good. Very good. Now, let's go back to the equation of IS. Wow. So, if we increase the collector voltage, I'm not going to, you have to take note, huh? If we increase the collector voltage, we are shrinking the W. If we shrink the W in this case, what happened to IS? Uh, increase. The scale current is called scale current because it's going to be multiplied by E V V E over VT. So, it means if this increased by anything, it will be amplified hugely by this guy. Do you understand? So, now this one increased, so the collector will will increase hugely, yes or no? So now we understand why we now go back. I see dependent. Uh, now I see becomes what? Dependent on VCE. Ah, I see now. Now becomes dependent. Now we can explain that. Ah, very good. Now we can explain why when we increase VCE, now the collector will have to increase a little bit. Well, it depends on VBE as well. Because VBE, where is VBE? VBE is in the equation of this one, VBE over VT, yes or no? So VBE will increase this part, okay? And VCE will increase this part, yes or no? We will increase the scale current, boom. And that's why the effect, this effect of increasing this will be felt only when this is big enough. That's why the slope is higher. When VBE is higher, yes or no? Then that? When VBE is higher, this becomes higher. That means any change in here, it will be amplified huge here. See? That's why the slope here is higher than the slope here. Because VBE here, which is this whole term here, is actually higher than this one, which is on this whole term. Okay. Got it? Fun, huh? Of course it's fun. All right. This effect of early, Mr. James Early, is called the base width modulation. It's similar to the MOSFET. Very good, excellent. Very good. This is very similar to the channel length modulation. Thank you very much. See? In the MOSFET. See how strange? How come this BJT and MOSFET they become like very similar? Very, very similar. Playing games with us, these guys. Huh? It's very, very similar. It's amazing. See? So we are we were modulating. Modulating means controlling the channel in the MOSFET with VDS. Huh? Now we are modulating or controlling the width of the uh, the width okay. of the base, huh? the effective width, with VCE, with the collector uh, voltage. See? Very, very similar. It's amazing, huh? Excellent. All right, good. So, we keep going. Tell us, taking notes? Yes. Very good. Very good. And this effect will be translated by a resistance, yes or no? Yes. That's what it is. Because if a voltage controls the current, that means there's a resistance. Yes or no? Yes. Mr. Ohm will kick him. Mr. Ohm that we don't trust. Ah, we tell him, oh, I'm joking. What's this? It's delta V over R is equal to I. That's what Mr. Ohm is. And so on. They still have question in his mind. Is he serious about that? Well, he was serious. And I'm sure he's serious. So R0 is going to be replacing, or we, we will see in the expression of R0, how really this voltage actually controls this current. So now the collector will give us the beta IV, the original current, plus a current uh, that is extra due to the base width modulation, uh, and then that current plus that will be extra, the, the, the total collector current, the real collector current, okay? Which, uh, which BGT is this one? Which BGT? This model of which BGT? NPN. How did we know? Because the current uh, is going out of the emitter. Out of the coming from Very good, exactly. Collector. Yeah, so it's coming into from the collector and the base and coming out 
of the emitter. Very good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. These models are very uh, same. It's just different equations. That's it. Good. Continue. Yes. Are we tired? Almost there. Okay. Very good. We explained already beta. We called it the common emitter uh, pan game. Yeah. Very good. To find beta, remember that in active mode, what do we have? We have I C uh, is equal to beta uh, I B. Yes or no? Yes. Beta, we said this is constant in the active mode. We, we don't have beta force. It's a number, boom, between 50 and 200. Huh? That means if I do a variation here, let me, I like variation in different colors. Because I, I like math. If we have any variation in delta B, in, in B, in the uh, base current, this will create a variation in the collector current. Or mathematically speaking, if we make a derivation on one side, it's the same as making derivation on the other side. Yes or no? Yes. Boom. It means physically speaking, if we change IB by delta IB, so we must have, we, have, we will have a change on the collector IC by delta IC. Yes or no? The collector will increase by delta IC. That's what it is. And why we do that? Because this will help us to explain the next slides. But before going there, we have to define some stuff. In the data sheet of the BJT, we have a parameter VCE sat. So this is coming actually to basically, uh, let's see, let me try to see if we have the circuit in there. Okay, good. So this is the circuit, okay, okay, uh, Netian circuit. So basically, the voltage in here, if we change the voltage in here, what's this voltage by the way? What do you call it? VC. V? Yeah? VCE VC. VC, actually, yeah, it says. VCE, because VC minus VE, yes or no? This voltage, if we decrease it, decrease it, decrease it, up to a certain level, we come into saturation. Do you understand? Yes. It does not go all the way. If it goes, if it reaches VCE sat, which is in the data sheet, then if it reaches VCE sat, we say that we entered the saturation. All right, good. VCE sat comes also in the data sheet. It's given to you, okay? And at that time, the resistance, because now, um, if we change the voltage of the collector, we have, we have a change in the collector current, yes or no? So in that case, we have also an effective resistance between the collector and the emitter, and that resistance, we call it RCE sat, okay? Very good. If we make the derivation, means the change in VCE over the change of the collector, we get this RCE sat means the RCE or the resistance between the collector and the emitter in the saturation, huh? and we found it or we calculated using this derivation, the variation of VCE divided by the variation of the collector, and we already have this ICE sat also. ICE sat is equal to what? Is equal to beta IB because ICE sat is the current huh, that comes into the collector. It goes to E, that's fine. You can have E here, that's okay. I C E sat now. I C E sat is going to be equal to beta forced. We don't have beta anymore now. If we are in the saturation, yes or no? Multiplied by I B in the saturation, we get I C E sat. And again, we have beta forced. Means this beta forced is totally different from beta that we have it previously. Okay. Shall we stop here? Too much, huh? I'm sure you are tired. Yes, yes or no? Yes. So let's have mercy today. Or continue? No. No, continue. Huh? <laughs> let's see what we have next and then we'll see. Uh, this is very important. Let's explain this and then we say goodbye because this is, and this is nothing, okay? We finish this one because we should not stop here because this is really, really important, okay? This explained to you actually the beta force. So this graph is IC VCE graph huh, of our BJT, MP and BJT, at different IB or a different VDE. We can either send the current here or we can control, basically we can control the collector using the current because remember that the collector current is equal to what? Is equal to beta IB, yes or no? So we inject the current, we amplify it here in the collector by beta. 
That's fine. Or we can change here the voltage and we can say that IC uh, is equal to IS uh, e, uh, uh, VDE over VC. Uh, that's fine. Either this one or this one. And that's why we have two models, either this one or this one. But usually people use this model. Why? Because it's linear. See? This is nonlinear. E power, okay? So this is the choice uh, in terms of models. Very good. But that's not the story. The story is the following. Remember that beta is equal to what again? That's why we wrote it. Beta is equal to what? Uh, delta IC, yes or no, over delta IB, yes or no? Yes. This is, we just discussed that, yeah? Yes or no? Good. <clears throat> See, each graph corresponds to a certain IB. So let's, uh, let's say we are starting by IB by a certain value, or let's say we call it this one. Uh, okay. We have a given value. IB, big IB, DC, boom, boom, and we are fine. But we increase it by a certain delta IB. And then from there, we increase it by another delta IB, and so on and so forth. The same delta IB. Delta IB, okay? So this is delta IB. Value. <clears throat> you can see that this difference is less than this difference, is less than this difference. Why? Because this difference is delta IC, yes or no? Hmm? Yes or no? Yes. This is delta IC. If I take from this point to this point, this is delta IC. If I want to calculate here on this axis, this gives me delta IC. Yes or no? At a given delta IB. Yes or no? Yes. Boom. So if we change IB by a certain delta IB, it gives me delta IC. You can see that this difference, although this graph from this graph may be the same delta IB, same like this one, but delta IC is not the same. Yes or no? Why? Because, again, Delta IC is beta delta IB. It amplifies. The change in IC is bigger than the change in IB. By how much? By beta. Then that? Then that? I repeat. Remember? Delta IC is beta delta IB. It means if there is a change, let's say, let's say, yeah? One uh, micro amp, for example. And this is, let's say, 100. So delta IC would be 100 micro amp. See, too many, huh? So the change in, in IB a little bit, but the change in IC has become bigger. Do you understand? Good. But the story is not there again. The story is here, in the saturation region. So this is the active region and this is saturation. Now if we take this and zoom it a little bit, we get this picture. Okay? Just at the border. Huh? It's bigger now. Huh? Very good. So you can see that this distance... If you look, as you go to the saturation, the distance here, which is delta IC, shrink. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. But delta IB is the same delta IB. Yes or no? Yeah. So basically, delta IC decreases, and delta IB, in the worst case, it's, uh, it's the same. So in this case, so if you look at this, delta IC, delta IC, where it goes? Down. Yes or no? Yeah. Although these are, the difference between them is the same delta IB. Yes or no? Let's say that IB is constant. We are not talking about that IB. Uh, assuming it's constant, okay, between the two. So if that IC decreases, assuming that that IB is the same, so this, which is actually beta, decrease. decrease. And in this case, we have this one. It's less than beta original. Yes or no? And that's why we call this one beta. forced. Beta forced. Yes or no? That's that? Because this. So it gets compressed. See? The compression of the curve here between the two. That makes beta really down. So we are not using then in this case beta of the BGT, the original one. Actually, we are using beta force in this case. And it depends on where you are inside the saturation. Okay? It depends now on the currents. Okay? So this is the graphical explanation of why beta force is less than beta and why beta force is actually why it goes down okay because the collector really is, goes really down or the change actually of also the collector current goes down as well so that's it with this uh, we finish the slide so basically when we reach the saturation typical values of the saturation uh, the boundaries of the saturation is basically when we reach dvc about uh, 0.5 volt means VB minus VC, so it's now forward biased. In that case, 
we are in a saturation region, okay? And of course, VBE is forward already, and this one, the um, what, you, what you call the collector emitter, is almost about 0.2 volt. We'll come back to this and explain it again in the next class, okay? And this basically finished this class, and uh, with the summary of the you know the equations and the, the models, we'll also revisit this next time. Inshallah, next class we'll finish the quiz and we'll do this part. Thank you very much and see you next class.